Codex. I'm gonna kind of read this one out to you guys because there's a lot to get through and I wanna make sure we get through it quickly, but also clearly. So with that in mind, what are video codecs? Well, let's see. Through the bits and the bytes and they, they take them and they make them smaller or something like that. Actually, codecs are kind of tricky. They are rather essential to our lives as video people. So let's see if we can't break down a few simple things to keep in mind about them. So the first thing to understand is that codecs can either be lossless, meaning they don't degrade the image, or lossy, which means they do degrade the image. And our reference point for image degradation is called uncompressed, which assumes that the video has not gone through any processing. And typically we refer to this as raw. Although there are actually compressed versions of raw, the idea of raw is to be lossless or at least darn close to it. But for our focus here, we're gonna focus on the lossy ones because that's what we'll see in many of our cameras and edit systems and websites. So we know that codecs have a ton of settings. Let's identify the most um, basic ones that you need to keep an eye on. Bit rates are the central control. They are referred to in numbers. Lower numbers mean a higher compression, which leads to a smaller file size, but with worse quality. And a higher numbers mean less compression, but for better quality and larger file sizes. It's the same with any codec. But here's the trick. A bit rate of say 10 for one codec can be entirely different for another codec. This is what we call a codec's efficiency. One codec may be more or less efficient than another codec. Another thing to keep in mind is what resolution you're using because a bit rate of say two might be good for standard def with a certain codec, but if you keep that bit rate and then up the resolution, you'll probably get terrible results. If you're adding pixels, you gotta add more data. Now, for some name calling, but in a good way, the biggest buzzword in the codec world today is H.264, which is a great, efficient, yet lossy codec. But it's also an absurd shapeshifter. See, because you also know it by several other names, AVC Intra, MPEG-4, AVC Cam, and probably a few others. But when you come right down to it, all these are actually MPEG-4 level, le MPEG level 10 codecs. Now, not that you really need to know that detail, but understand that the reason for all this name changing is that MPEG codecs are absurdly customizable and tunable. So each name change means a company has made their own recipe. And each recipe can either be delicious or just mildly satisfying. Now that we cleared that up, suffice it to say that when you're rendering, you don't need to mess with the depths of settings to get a good image. Just stick with the basics and try different bit rates to see what works for you. And just to name a few other codecs, there's the older but still great MPEG-2, which has been the codec you've watched for years on every single DVD you've ever owned. It also has shapeshifted into a higher definition version called HDV. And then we have Panasonic's own DVC Pro codec, which is great, very good in editing at the expense of fairly high recording bit rates. Then there's Apple's own ProRes, which is also very high in bit rate, but that one comes very close to being, you know, lossless, even though it's a lossy codec, so it's also very good. You know, then we've got, there's WMV, DV, HBO, TMZ, and TMI. You know, it doesn't really matter what's out there. It matters what works for you. So say your needs are to export to websites, you'll most likely be using H.264, or say you're going for Blu-ray delivery, you might be using MPEG or again, H.264. The key with most any rendering you'll do is to match the settings to your original video. The only two settings you will typically change are the bitrate and resolution. If the source is 1080 and you're going to web, you might lower the resolution and bitrate, or if you're going to Blu-ray, you'll likely keep the resolution and keep the bitrate very high. Presets are usually a good start, actually. Now, this is long enough as it is, but there's one last piece I can't leave you without, and that's file extensions, such as .wmv, .mpg, .mp4, yeah, those. We call them containers, and they contain the codecs. The only thing you need to understand about these are that there are containers which are single codec containers, which means they only represent one codec, and then there are the containers which can contain any number of different codecs, just not at the same time. And the primary multi-purpose yeah, the primary multi-purpose containers are .mov and .avi. So if someone tells you to give them an MOV or an AVI, they just told you to give them one of any several dozen different codecs. So what you need to do is ask them for some specifics because if you just give them any random codec, there's a decent chance they won't be able to play it and then they'll blame you for it. So to keep things simple, ask specifics. Oh, and a quick word on delivery formats, say if say you got distribution lined up. 
So say, you know, you need to send it to a distribution company that signed you for your movie that you did a really good job on. Good job. And what does delivery the distribution company want? Well, they should tell you. But I know from experience that they may just tell you to give them an AVI or an MOV. Frustrating, I know. But the key here, again, is to just ask specifics. Ask questions. If anything, ask if you can give them a Huff YUV, which is a very efficient um, codec, which is lossless. It's very high in file sizes, but hey, you sold your film. Go get a hard drive. It's, you know, you want to get the pristine quality of them as possible. So if you can't do that, you know, see if you can give them an MPEG-2 or an MP4. And if they say yes, just make sure you set all the set the bit rates as high as they can go. And, you know, make sure you match your sequence settings and be sure to check the quality of the video before sending it in. And that's pretty much it for the basics. I could go on and on because there's a lot of detail, but these should keep you, uh, these should get you going and give you something to do and start playing around with and get some good uh, quality renders out of them. So that's it for the basics on Codex. Keep on to it. If you have any other questions, be sure to ask me. I'll try my best to answer them for you. And in the meantime, happy shooting.